All right, so we're uh, going to go into this coat of arms book. Is the Hendrik van Hazel uh, Wappen book or coat of arms book? It's from the 1400s, 1456, I believe. Okay, all right, so I bring you to this page of the book right here. And again, this is from uh, Holland, coat of arms book, as you can see here. What well, looks to be uh, like a ladder symbol here in their coat of arms and a so called Negro king. Now we're going to take a look at the Surish Armorial, all right? The Surish Armorial. Uh, this is from Switzerland, okay? It says the Surish Armorial on parchment is one of the most important and most unusual documents of medieval heraldry. Today, it consists of four parts of various length, which can be combined into one four-meter-long roll. Painted on both sides of the parchment, it depicts 559 coat of arms, each shield decorated with a crest of high and lower nobility from northern Switzerland, southern Germany and western Austria names are given next to each shield and down here it says the armorial is incomplete though all right the missing fourth part should have contained another 109 coat of arms which are known from late 18th century copy of the roll the armorial was probably created in Zurich or in the area of Lake Constance it can be dated to the period between 1330 and 1345 okay this is from the 1300s the style of the workmanship is reminiscent of the famous Codis Manis. All right, we're going to take a look at this uh, rolls, these armorial coat of arm rolls from the 1300s. And I just want to show you guys. Um, see, some of these are very long. You can roll them out pretty long. Okay, so these have been scanned. We're going to look at each one of them. And as you guys can see, many different uh, shields here represented. And of course, just want to show and zoom into this one right here, as you can see. A noble uh, family from Switzerland. This is their coat of arms from the 1300s. Okay, there you go. 1300s, and again, different types of shields represented. Now, to me, this looks like a camel, and uh, I don't know if there was camels in Switzerland, but all right, so that should tell you something right there. But um, check this out. All right, once again. This is the next roll, pretty long. All right, I'm gonna zoom in right here. Just a little bit so you guys can see the different shields they got here. And pretty cool ones right here, very interesting. This is like a football helmet or something. Uh, but I wanna zoom into this one, you guys can see. And you got the peacock re representation right here. And then you got this family. And this is the name if you can read it, all right. Again, noble families from Switzerland, 1300s. All right, look at that. It's a little old and damaged, but it still survives. You see, and these ain't Africans at all. And this is another one. Okay, and I'm going to zoom into this part right here. So you guys can see I'm not just, you know, randomly picking stuff. There is some pale skin representations. We'll give them the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> But then we got this right here, as you can see, look at this. Talk about Vikings, right? Talk about Viking, right? Look at that. Remember, this is from Switzerland, 1300s. All right, black noble families from the 1300s, Switzerland, okay? Look at this, wow. <laughs> this is the next row, okay? Some of these are very damaged. All right, these are very cool. Look at these drawings. Look at this. All right. This one has like a pale skin person on top. Hmm. We don't know if they did sign, but look at the shield. All right. You see the shield. And then we're going to go on this side. And then we got this one right here. As you guys can see, that is also a dark skinned person. Again, black noble families of Switzerland. Very interesting looking one right here. And again, very damaged is old again from the 1300s or was this done intentionally? Hmm. About black biking, right? 
that's the symbol again on top and that's the shield look at that like a superhero again then we're gonna come over here a couple pale skin representations if they haven't whitened them out right <laughs> then we got a black queen we got a black queen right here all right again nobles from switzerland 1300s this is from the 1300s all right and this is another one of the rolls come into this part right here as you can see out of all of the uh shields here the only person represented all right the black king so-called black frilinga frilinga Singer. Look at that. Again, noble families of Switzerland from the 1300s. Black noble families from Switzerland, so called black. All right, so now uh, we're going to go into this uh, coat of arms books. Is the uh, Wappen Book or Coat of Arms? That's what it means. Wappen Book of Der Oesterichsen Monarchy. Oesterichsen Monarchy 11, it says, all right? This is the cover. All right, so just real quick, this is the information on uh, this uh, coat of arms. I went to uh, Google Translate again, and it says, the complete coat of arms book consists of 22 volumes with 400 copper plates of the Austrian monarchy, 1831, 1855, and 13 volumes of all princely and countly houses of the Austrian monarchy, all right? From 1852 to 1865, it was published in Nuremberg by J. A. Tyrof, a descendant of the Tyrof family of engravers and publishers. I want to bring you to uh, this part of the book, this page right here, showing this uh, very elegant, beautiful coat of arms. All right, it says Grafen von Moor, Grafen von Moor. All right, as you can see, this is the top the bottom the shield who is that look at that black noble austrian family these ain't africans black noble austrian family okay all right so now i want to bring you to this page right here very interesting and also beautiful crest showing a lot of lot here shown a lot here this is the Freherren von Moor Freherren von Moor family now look at the top first all right look at the top all right then you go down to the shield look at that just like in America right? you see the Jamaican coat of uh, flag or coat of arms or the shield same thing right out of many one people look at that same thing all right, look at this. Who's that? Those are Indians to me. Those look like American Indians to me. So this family got American Indians and some maybe some Moorish. Is that showing the combination of the families and the origin and what they became or what's going on here? This is very deep right here, huh? Look at this. This is awesome. They got American Indians in their coat of arms, huh? Wow, look at that. All right, so I'm in uh, wappenbook.de website. Actually, pretty good. It has a lot of good scans of a lot of the uh, coat of arms uh, books in one place. And this is the Frankische original weapon. And I put that on Google Translate and it says Frankish original coat of arms. And right here we got, it says B. Eberstein. And as you can see, this is one of the ones, Frankish families. All right, this is the Morkenstein family. As you can see, Black Queen, right? Again, Frankish families coat of arms medieval times 
All right, this next one is from this uh, coat of arms. And I translated that and it says, Bavarian, Saxon, Hessian, Silesian, Austrian original coat of arms, historical illustrations. This is the next one I'm going to show you right now. All right, this is the uh, uh, Schenk Winter Stetten. All right, as you can see, so-called Vikings was this with the horns, right? The Vikings had horns, right, on their helmets. All right, and what is that on the uh, shield? Looks almost like corn or pineapple. You got the tree up here. And that symbol again, that almost looks like a C. All right, so uh, this one right here is the one as well. And this is the Dai Brevning. Uh, Buchenbach, Buchenbach, and uh, the way they scanned it, it came out a little blurry. As you can see, also another representation here next to him. But again, a lot of noble, so-called black families in these areas, medieval times, as you can see. I got another coat of arms here. It says here Mev's uh, back, as you can see, also representing a noble, so-called black family. All right, from Bavaria, Saxon, Austrian area, medieval times. Got another one right here. It says here the Lost Tits, Lost Tits, family crest, showing a so-called Negro person on their shield. Okay, as you can see, black noble families of Europe. And again, these are not just captives, Moors captives or their slaves. They wouldn't do that. They wouldn't put their captives or slaves on their family crest. Okay, and uh, this is another crest that I have right here. This is the, uh, it says here, Poland's, Poland's family crest, as you can see, being depicted here. A dark skinned person on their crest. All right, very cool here with the cap. What is that? Like the peacock uh, feathers behind him on top of the cap. Got another one here. It says here Lobers or Lobets. And as you can see, very cool crest, the colors and uh, these are the picture. The person with his hands on his uh, hips, standing very uh, positive, very strong, affirmative. And now we could bring it over here. We got another crest, almost the same. It says Dai Saki. You see the X right here in the shield, also with the hands on his hip. As you can see, who's represented on the top again. And this is the next image I'm going to show you is from this uh, coat of arms. Translator says the Rhineland original coat of arms. The Rhineland, all right, where the German Palatines came from. And a lot of the Huguenots. We got this uh, family crest here, showing this Bonheim Bakarak, Barak, almost like bless, right? Uh, Sponheim, as you can see, it looks like a noble Nestorian <laughs> king, right? Wise king. Look at that. All right, real quick, we're gonna go into uh, this uh, coat of arm books is the uh, Wappen book or coat of arms of Der Presu Presusian Monarchy. All right, what does that mean? So I got this information right here from uh, Waikiki. We went to the translation, it says here, the coat of arms book of Prussian monarchy is a collection of coat of arms. The first volume was published in 1828 by the publishing house of the art publishing house Tyrov in Nuremberg. The coat of arm book consists of a total of 31 volumes that were published by this publisher between 1828 and 1870. The coat of arms include the families that were raised to the nobility by the Prussian kings or had been ennobled to a special degree by the kings, okay, during the publication period. All right, 4,525 coat of arms of Prussian noble families were displayed most of these families lived in Silesia. Prussian noble families, okay? All right, first image I want to show you in this book right here. All right, it says here, Von Krauschar. Von Krauschar. 
but Krushar, Krushar, they plum boom from 1749, all right? 1749, and look at this. Very nice image here. Look at that. Who's that right on the image? Look at the hair. Look at the features you already know. Look at this noble Prussian families, okay? Noble from Prussia. We got a lot of indentured servants were being sent from Prussia. A lot of those coming in were people of color. A lot of those could have been these noble families they were getting rid of. All right, prisoners of war, just like Jacobites, you never know. I want to bring you to this other image right here, another page. And it says here, Von Staff, Janant von Reinsenstein. Okay, and look at the coat of arms. Look at that, so-called Negro, right? And this noble Prussian family crest. All right, as you can see again. Yeah, and the X. All right, Prussian noble families. Once again, we got the Freiherrin von Musenbach family. This is from the volume 20 of the Prussian nobility uh, coat of arm books. I just wanted to show you this one, zoom in a little bit. You see the crown, beautiful drawing here in the crest and look at that. You already know who that is. And this is what's represented in the Prussian noble family crest. This is not a slave or more captive. We read what it said. It didn't say anything about that. It said noble families of Prussia. Okay. As you can see. Right. And again, there's so many volumes of this. Uh, and, and I can't go in order because they're all low. You know, they're not in order. But this is volume 35 again of the... Uh, Prussian Noble Families uh, Coat of Arms by J.A. Tyroff. I'm bringing you to this page of this volume. As it says here, Von Farin, Farintel Gruppenberg. All right, and look at this. See the guy on the top holding the leaf or, you know, whatever that is. All right, you guys might know better. All right, you see that? With the arm, copper colored. You already know. Nice. Nice drawing of, of this family's coat of arms. Another image here says the Frankenheimer von Seifertz Dietz. All right, 1711. And this is what they have on the top here. Okay, almost look very indigenous kind of, right? You know, down here we got a couple of familiar stars. Couple familiar symbols, the lions. All right, very nice crest. And you can see what's on the top. Very interesting. All right, this is in uh, volume 29 of the same book of the Prussian family, uh, noble family, coat of arms books by J.A. Tyroff. And uh, it says here, Edel Heron, Frank Heron von Plotto. This is 1643, it says, see? The older you get, all right? Sorry, dear. And then you got, all right, doubles king here. Almost look like the playing cards kind of type drawings, right? And, and the shield as well, Swarty. Noble people, Swarty Europeans, Prussian, nobles, royalty, family crest, okay? And we're in another page. This is a very interesting one as well. Very similar. This is the Edel von Plotto or Plotau, right? Almost sounds the same as the other family. It must be the same. This time appears to be a male. And what appears to be feathers, right? A feather crown, right? Hmm. Almost indigenous looking, right? Very interesting. What is the story behind this? Who are they? Where are they originating from? Are they remembering where they're coming from before they got to Prussia? Prussian nobles, again, remember these are Prussian nobles, 1600s. We got the uh, other image set for the other family. As you can see here, Swarthy Europeans, Swarthy Indians. Hmm.
All right, just to uh, change it up a little bit again. Uh, this time we're going to go into this uh, family court of barn books. Uh, we can continue on the Prussian ones we are uh, later on. All right, and this is uh, what we're going to get into, what it says right here. I brought that to the translator, and it says Medieval German Coat of Arms. All right, Medieval German Coat of Arms. I'd like to start out with this image right here, as I found here in this shield. And I guess this is the family up here. Sorry, it's not easy to control. There we go. And uh, this is what they have on their family crest, as you can see. All right, very interesting. This is the other ones right next to it. You see? All right, I now bring you to this beautiful image right here and drawing this family crest. All right, what we see here, a so-called black queen, a swarthy queen, noble, medieval, right? We're talking about 1200s, 1300s, 1400s, medieval times. This is the family, if you can interpret it. All right, very beautiful image, very beautiful de depiction. Glad this was saved. Look at this, look at this zoom in. Do you remember when you had kingdoms all over the world? Not just American Indians, but all over the world. All right. Can I get a so swarthy? Beautiful drawing again from that time. Very old image. Swarthy Europeans, nobles, German families. Wow, just, you know, very beautiful. This is the uh, ones right next to it. The other chills. But again, very beautiful image right here with this queen. All right, so we got this on another uh, page of this book. Okay, let me zoom out. You guys can see. Again, German, medieval German families, noble families. Jump in another page right here. Again, this is from Germany. Okay, this is from Germany. This is another family crest, shield. This is the words right here, if you can interpret it. As you can see, Moorish, right? And then this is the one next to it. Down here is another one, all right? Another family, they might be related, showing almost similar, right? As you can see, big and so-called Negro people. And look at the moon on this family's shield, right? Break the spell. It's right in front of you. 